and welcome back to freephotoshop.com and the second video in our four part special on lightning here inside Photoshop Elements 10. In the previous video we set the scene by darkening both the foreground and clouds in the background and we need to go ahead and create the lightning now so without any further ado let's get started. I'm going to start by creating a brand new image so let's go to the file menu and we'll click on new and then we'll click on blank file and I'll create an image that's 500 pixels wide by 500 pixels high and I'll make sure that the RGB color mode is active and then make sure that the background contents are set to transparent once I'm happy that all of this is so then I'll click OK to create the file now creating a lightning strike is by no means obvious unless you've got a set of lightning brushes or something like that but we're not going to go down the road of brushes in this tutorial because most of the good ones you'll have to pay for and we can create a realistic lightning bolt with just a little creativity here inside of elements so let's start by coming over to the toolbox and activating the gradient tool which is this little button in the third row up then I'll come up and click on the gradient sample from the left side of the options bar that's going to open up the gradient editor now if I hover over these different presets then I'll get alerted as to what they are and what they're called and I want to go for the very first one which is labeled foreground to background so go ahead and give it a click and then hit OK now we need to make sure we have black and white swatches active down here in the toolbox and a top tip here is that these need to be pure black and white so if you're not sure that you have got exactly black and exactly white then I'd suggest that you go ahead and click this little reset icon next to the swatches to put them to pure black and to pure white it could make all the difference now we need to come over to the image and from about one quarter of the way across click and drag to the three quarter position somewhere around here and to make sure we're giving ourselves a straight line we can hold down the shift key on the keyboard and then release not looking too much like lightning at the moment I think we can all agree but uh, stick with me here next we need to add the difference clouds filter so come up to the filters menu right here at the top and then come down and select the render sub menu and then select difference clouds like so the interesting thing about this filter is that it's applied randomly so every time we apply the filter it will wield slightly different results and what we're looking for is something running down the middle here that has the slightest resemblance to a strike of lightning if what we've just done doesn't then we can hit Control or command z to undo the change and then to apply the same filter again from the keyboard we can hit the control or command key and press the letter F on the keyboard like so and we'll get to see a slightly different result feel free to give it a few tries until you see something that you like and remember we're looking for a shape at this stage not necessarily something that looks remarkably like a bolt of lightning just something that has the general shape of a nice lightning strike okay that should do us quite nicely so once we're happy with the application of that filter we can go ahead and invert the colors on screen so come up to the filter menu and then choose adjustments this time and then choose the invert command as it is inside Photoshop CS and by the way if you are using Photoshop CS then you're going to find that command under the image menu rather than the filter menu so just remember that if you are using the uh, the full version of Photoshop rather than elements as we are here so things are coming along quite nicely we now need to get to the business end of the procedure so come up to the enhance menu up here at the top and then choose adjust lighting and then select the levels command now let's grab hold of this little black point icon and drag it over to the right side of the histogram to somewhere about here I'm not going to be able to give you a value here because as I said each instance of the difference clouds filter is different and so that you're gonna find out that we're working with different versions and different results so you'll just have to trust your instinct on this one 
Once you've found something that you like, go ahead and grab the grey handle in the middle and drag that to the right as well, just to make the lightning a little cleaner in appearance. You can also use the numeric input controls if you need a little more precision getting to the right value, but something like that looks good to me. I'll hit OK to accept that change and we now have a realistic looking lightning bolt and if you want to go ahead and grab the brush tool again and clear up a few details that don't belong. Sometimes you do get sections of lightning coming out that you just don't need so now's a good time to go ahead and delete the stuff that you really don't want. Once you're happy we can go ahead and move this to our image so come up to the select menu up here in the menu bar and hit the all command then come over to the edit menu and this time we want to select the copy command now using the tabs at the top of the image let's switch back to the original photograph of that storm down in the valley and then come back up to the edit menu and choose the paste command to paste that lightning strike into our image now you're probably thinking how on earth are we going to get rid of this black background well I guess we could go ahead and use the magic extractor or something like that but there's a far more effective way which just so happens to be quicker too so come over to the layers panel and we need to switch the blend mode of the layer from normal to this guy right here the screen blend mode and as if by magic the black pixels go away the lighter pixels remain and we couldn't have asked for a better result now let's get this thing into place so come back up to the image menu choose the transform option and select free transform now we can drag the top left handle down to reduce its size and drag inside the transformation box to put it into position and I'll do that a few times to get into the right position that I feel looks most realistic it doesn't have to be exact because we're going to fix that in a second but we do need to get it roughly where we want it and I think somewhere like this will be okay to confirm that I'll hit the enter key here on the PC or the return key on the Mac and now I'll hit control alt and click with the left mouse button to zoom into the lightning like so and now to perfect its appearance I'm going to come back over to the layers panel make sure the lightning layer is active and then click on this little mask icon at the bottom just like so. Now if you want more information on masking then I have free tutorials here at freephotoshop.com looking at the basics of masking so I'd highly recommend going and checking those out. What I'm going to do here though is paint on the mask with the brush tool and if I paint with black then I will essentially hide the contents of the layer. So let's activate the brush by pressing the B key on the keyboard and then I'll get this thing to a workable size using the bracket keys of course and this time I'll benefit from a harder brush so I'll use shift right bracket to make it harder we can see the shape outline of the brush changing slightly there and then I'll start painting away parts of the lightning that I no longer need starting at the top giving it the appearance that it's just popping out from this cloud it's quite nice and then we'll move our attention to the bottom where we have to be a little more careful to ensure it looks realistic something like that looks good and I'd say I'm happy with that so I'd say that we're done I'd say that's a good job well done and I'll zoom out again to check out the whole image and of course I'll hit the tab key once again to see everything on screen minus the panels and toolbox and all of that stuff that gets in the way and you can make your own mind up but I'd say that looks realistic I'm quite happy with the way that's looking next up in the third video out of the four that we have for you today we're going to add some stormy text to the bottom of the image not to add to its realism but to complete the overall effect I hope you've enjoyed the training so far and I'll see you in the next video mm -hmm.